in the month of August 2017, a devastating natural disaster known as Hurricane Harvey wreaked havoc primarily in the Texas region of the United States. One month later, during the month of September, another hurricane, this one known as Irma, ravaged various areas near the Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, this was only the beginning. Other hurricanes such as Jose, Katia, and Maria have all solidified themselves as notable contributors to what is being referred to as one of the worst hurricane seasons in the history of mankind. Alongside these hurricanes stand a few major earthquakes that occurred in central Mexico, killing hundreds of people, collapsing dozens of buildings, and trapping an unknown amount of citizens who have still yet to be discovered at the time of this recording. In times like these, there are many believers who don't know how to react. What are we supposed to tell a man who lost his home during a hurricane and can no longer feed his children? What can we say to a woman whose daughter was killed during an earthquake in Mexico? What can we possibly tell someone who has lost everything during times like these? What can we possibly say that can make them feel better? The answer is nothing. We can't say anything that will be sufficient enough to solve these people's problems. Our words alone will not provide food to a man's children. They won't bring a child back to life, nor will they replace everything these people had before these catastrophes. There is nothing we can say. Our words are unsuccessful in these endeavors. They will never be enough. Our words will fail. But when our words fail, God's word prevails. His word prevails when our words fail. I believe there is power in the word. I believe there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that as Christians, we have an opportunity to bless others through his word. And his word says in the letter to the Romans that it is through suffering that we grow stronger in spirit. When you're in a situation where your belongings have been eliminated, your body has been damaged, your money destroyed, in these moments, the only thing you have left to rely on is the condition of your spirit, your perseverance. The only thing you have left to rely on is God's word, which has survived the test of time. When your material wealth is gone, the condition of your spirit can help push you through whatever obstacles you face. And how do we condition our spirit? Through prayer, Bible study, fellowship, worship, and most of all, faith. Faith is the assurance of things not yet seen. You may not see your house anymore. You may not see your belongings. You may not see your loved ones. But what you do have, and what can never be taken away, is your faith that God will see you through. God will provide for you, not in materialistic wealth, but in spirit. I am not preaching a prosperity gospel here. I will openly admit that we are going to suffer in life. You have suffered. You may be suffering now and you will suffer in the future. And God will use this suffering to strengthen your spirit and see you through the storm. The suffering you are going through is only temporary. It will not last forever. But what will last forever is God's enduring love for you. His mercy endures forever. His plan will last forever. And His kingdom endures forever. So if you're suffering right now, remember the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4.7, where, shortly before his death, he says he fought the good fight and finished the race. This shows us that Paul was able to die with satisfaction knowing that not only did he push through and persevere through the challenges life threw at him, but he was also able to keep his faith during the midst of it all. And honestly, 
I feel like this passage and Paul's life testimony should serve as an inspiration to us all. When we suffer in life, we are fighting the same good fight that Paul did too. And I don't know about you, but when I finish the race, I want to say that I kept the faith too. I want to look back at my life one day when I'm older and tell others, you know what? In my life, there were times when I suffered. There were times where I had to go through obstacles I felt were too much for me to handle. There were times where I had to endure some of the most difficult challenges you can ever imagine. And sometimes it wasn't fair. But I also know it is because of these challenges and it is because of this suffering and it is because of my faith in God that I became the person I am today, strong in spirit, confident in faith, and immovable in suffering.